it's about to go down. Kidney Disease Education Moment. I am your host, Steve Belcher. This is this was an impromptu broadcast. Again, the Spirit told me to do this broadcast on emergency takeoff. How's everyone doing this evening? I hope you're doing fine. Look, <laughs> you're not going to get any information like this from no other dialysis center this time in, at night. Imagine this scenario. You go to outpatient dialysis, right? They short a staff. A fire breaks out or something breaks out where you have to evacuate the unit immediately. And they're taking other people off. Who's going to take you off when the time needs to come off dialysis? Don't think these scenarios can't happen. Uh, give me a moment. Just give me one moment. Um, think about your parents. If your parents are elderly, you take them to dialysis and you go home and wait for them and they're in a wheelchair or something and their hands are weak. Who, who's going to clamp the lines if the staff is short and the, and the staff has three patients, four patients? Who's going to care for your loved one or you when it's time to go? Um, I want to show you something. This anything can happen. There was a share this broadcast, guys. Um, we're trying to get this information out there. This was in Albania. Imagine if you was at this unit, okay? Uh, 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 imagine this. Now, this is a unit in Albania. Now, check out this gentleman coming over here with the liquid. What if you was in that unit? Who's going to take you off dialysis? Don't think it can't happen. I'm not trying to scare nobody. I mean, I'm just saying life is is life. And you know how people are these days. If you want to look it up, just Google, go on YouTube. Albanian sets entire hospital ward on fire. So with, with that being said, you need to know or, or if you a loved one or someone that goes to dialysis, there is a huge fundraising. Deficit. You need to know what to do if a natural disaster comes. If you need to evacuate the unit immediately, you need to know how to clamp them lines, turn that blood pump off, and get the hell out of Dodge. So, 
with that being said, um, what we're going to talk about is emergency takeoff. And so this right here is a Venus line. And the Venus line, most warriors know it's the return line, right, where the blood goes back to you from the dialyzer. I got my I got my teaching aids tonight, guys. Look inside this dialyzer. If you've never seen inside of a dialyzer, that's the fibers right there. That's what your blood goes through in a dialyzer. If you've never seen the fibers. So what happens if you need to get out Make sure you ask your caregiver at the unit to show you where the blood pump are, where the blood pump is for the machine. You turn that off, and this is the line, the return line, right? So let me set it up for you. Here go your needle, and then here go the return line. Lower locked in. All right, so you take down, right? You take down, the needle's in. What you want to do is clamp this line and the needle line the, to the cannula, right? Now, most places have a pouch on top of the machine that got scissors in it or Kelly clamps, but mainly scissors because if you can't twist this lower lock to disconnect, sometimes it can get stuck. You may not have the strength to turn it. The technician may have tightened it so hard that if you tried to take it off, you couldn't unscrew it. Now, if that's the case, you get those scissors and you cut right here, right? Don't cut up here above, don't cut above the clamp because you'll bleed to death. You cut below the clamp. And if you need to do this, you cut below the clamp right here, right? Not above the clamp. If you clamp above, the, uh, above this clamp, you're going to bleed to death. And if it's an emergency, you do not want that to happen. All right, because everybody's losing their mind. They're trying to get other patients evacuated out of the unit. And so the more you know, right? Because we, we know we have warriors all over the world. And with the natural uh, natural disasters, the fires in California, the earthquakes, tornadoes, I mean, it's a, a, a list of natural disasters, flooding. And then we gotta think about our international warriors in countries like Africa, Bangladesh, Taiwan, Malaysia, all right? We, we got to think global. So, because they may not know. So again, for the Venus, you got the needle on, right? You running on dialysis. You make sure you cut the blood pump off first. Let me tell you why. If you clamp these lines while the blood pump is spinning, right, it's going to cause pressure to back up. Now, it's going to go off when the machine alarms, but you just want to turn the blood pump off, ask the technician, say, I got it. You know, you're going to handle other patients who can't get off. Because let me tell you, 
Imagine if you're in a 30, 40 chair unit and it's short of staff and you have an emergency and you got to evacuate. What do you do? I tell you what you do. You learn how to do it yourself. Now, again, these lines doing treatment, right? They're going to be open. They're going to be open. Let me see. Okay. They're going to be open. You see how they open? Boom. We got to evacuate. There's an emergency. Tornado warning. Right? Turn the pump off. Clamp. Clamp. Disconnect. Get some tape. You do the same thing with the arterial. Here with the arterial line, right? Here go the same thing. It's no different. Arterial clamp right here. You're gonna always see this. This. Uh, this thick clamp near the end, right? You're always going to see it near the end. This thick clamp. Always remember that. You can always, you clamp it. It's, it's going to cut off the blood, right? So that's what you want to do. Emergency, turn the pump off. Clamp, clamp disconnect if you can't disconnect make sure you have some scissors and cut right here again cut right here not above the clamp if you cut above you're going to bleed to death okay i want to make that perfectly clear um same here Cut, don't cut above this clamp. Cut below. That way it's still clamped. So if in a true emergency, right? If, if, if it's a true emergency, guys, pay heed. Do not remove your needles. Absolutely do not remove them yourself. Do not remove the tape at the needle site. Only remove tape that prevents you from leaving your chair. You know how some uh, technicians or nurses like to tape um, once they get you on? They take, uh, here we go. They take these lines to the chair. How many of you had your, your, your lines taped to the chair and you tried to move and you couldn't because it's taped down? Or you got them taped up like this. Right here, up on your arm. And it's going across your chest like this. How, how many know what I'm talking about? Give me a thumbs up. If you know what I'm talking about, you watching this, and you got an access in your arm, and the lines go across your chest while you're doing dialysis, and you're like, what the hell is going on? You're looking down, your blood flowing through, right? And they got you taped up like this. They got the tape all, all bandaged up. Now, if you got the tape all wrapped up like a mummy, if it's an emergency, how the hell are you going to get all that tape off and exit the unit? So what you want to do, have them tape it and have some slack in it. Have some slack in the lines so you can see it. Don't have it jumbled up and twisted. Have it out, right? You can see your access, see the needles. That way, 
if you do need to evacuate, you don't have to go through a mound of tape and lose your freaking life because you couldn't untape yourself, right? So, again, remove that tape that is attached to the chair. If the machine alarms when you clamp the line, ignore it because some people may panic. You got to get out of there. Disconnect, get out of there. So again, if you look at this, you see where they you see where they clamping it? You see the clamp? You see, right here, clamp, clamp, then we move over here, clamp right there. So, I hope you guys, you know, got this. Uh, pretty much the end of the education session, pretty simple. It's four clamps you got to clamp, the needle clamp and the line clamps if you need to evacuate. And again, if you've never seen inside of a dialyzer, there you go. That's what your blood goes through when you're on dialysis inside the casing. So... If you've never seen it before, there you go, guys. So I want to read the comments, and I want to close the show up. Let me see. Please share this like saying about that. Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Sean Love. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching, Gene. Thank you for watching. And why don't most clinics want to explain things to you like you are doing because they don't got the time, man. They don't got the time to do it. They busy trying to um, put on other patients. And you see when they sit down, they looking on their phone. You, you seen that in the clinics, you know, after they put you on, have you noticed and like after your tech put you on or any warriors watching, have you noticed after you know, they get you on the machine, tape you up and everything. They go over and sit down at the desk and they pull out their cell phone and they be going through it and the alarm goes off and it takes somebody like two or three minutes to just go reset a freaking alarm. You ever experienced that? It happens all the time. It takes, th and, and this is the thing about it. The longer it takes for them to come and reset that alarm, the more you're at prone for your blood to clot. And Lord, help if you're not getting any heparin. If you're not getting any uh, anticoagulant, it's a wrap. And just think, what, what if you have a problem with your arterial needle, right? They, they stick you. Let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let me take this banner off. How many people, right? How many people, this is a 16 gauge needle, right? How many warriors with an AV fistula or graph been through this? Digging, the, the tech digging, right? Digging in your arm, trying to get it in. They standing over your arm, right? They standing over your arm, trying to get that needle in, digging, digging, and you holding back. You 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 uh you tightening your fist up, and they digging, digging. I mean, how many people go through that digging and they can't find it, and then they hold the needle right there, 
and they calling for another technician to come over and help them out. How, how many warriors been through that? I mean, I'm not making this stuff up. That's why we um, promote and encourage you to, to cannulate your own self, be mindful of your treatments, because you don't want people to keep digging in your arm like you digging for gold. Come on, man. I know, I mean, I've had issues with patients, and I don't go like that. If I can't get it, I call somebody else who can. I, I don't I don't uh inflict that pain on anyone like that. So um thank you, Gene, for <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you know, thank you, Gene, for tuning in. And, and you know how it is, uh, Gene. I mean, it's ridiculous. And, but unfortunately, it happens. You know, we're not perfect. But, I mean, if, you, if, if it happens, at least have some empathy if you mess up. Don't mess up and then get a freaking attitude because you messed up. You know, it's like call a spade a spade. If you messed up, you messed up. Shit, don't try to blame it on the patient talking about you moved your arm or you must have did this. So, um, I mean, it's all kind of mess out there. Thank you again, uh, Shine Love, for uh, sharing this information. And I hope I explained that to you. <laughs> I went around the world with it. But that's the reality of a dialysis clinic. Um. Oh, and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. God bless you. I mean, I appreciate it. Um. Yeah, you got to be your own advocate again, Shine. Thank you for watching, uh, Julie Green. Thank you, uh, Julian. We do this all the time, man. You can go to our uh, um, Facebook page, Urban Health Outreach Media, and go into the videos. We got over six hundred broadcasts. And you can pretty much uh, take your choice. Again, thank you, Bridget, for tuning in. Um, Shine, thank you so much, Bridget. Shine, yes, it, it is. This information. See, the thing about it, Shine, love, is that I I try to do this information because the unfortunate thing about this. Each year, more than 700,000 people are diagnosed with kidney failure. That's why these dialysis clinics are popping up in East Baltimore, on uh, uh, North Avenue and Greenmount, uh, North Avenue and Broadway, 29th and Greenmount, 25th Street, uh, Hartford Road. They're all over the place. Merlin General. Uh, Hollis Street. I mean, there's so many in Baltimore and beyond that it's predicted. It's predicted that more than 700,000 people will be diagnosed. So I do this because maybe, Shine, you may know somebody with kidney disease that I don't know. Or you may have a relative or just know somebody who's dealing with this that could benefit from this show. And so that's why we continue to do what we do. So, again, thank you so much. I love you. I know we never met, but you have been so gracious um, and, and sharing my information. Pretty much the only person from Larry's feed uh, that's done that. And he's done it as well. But thank you so much. God bless you. And uh, whatever you need from me to do to help uh, do what you got to do to get your message out there, just say it. If you want to come on the show, I do a radio show broadcast. I'll, I'll put that back into play and bring you on so you can just share what you do. And it doesn't even have to be about kidney disease. It could be about community because we do community outreach too. So, uh Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. My condolences. So uh, even if you want to come on the show and talk about that, uh, how you dealt with kidney disease, 
as uh, you know, having a parent with being on dialysis. Hey, just let me know. Hit me on the uh, inbox, and, and we'll make that show happen. And then you can, from that, you can share, you know, what you do, and 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 your positiveness, and 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 what you do. So, just let me know. So again, thank you. So guys, again, emergency takeoff. You definitely got to know this because. Again, I've known so many people who brought the, who dropped their parents off to dialysis. I saw it today in front of a Davida when I went to a store where Davida was at. Somebody picking up their parents. The baby boomers are getting older. I'm sure I have a buddy, Larry Jernigan. His dad go to dialysis. He takes him there. His dad is 92 years old. And once he leaves them there, Lord forbid something happened if, if they got to evacuate some terrorist attack or some fire, some flooding, whatever the case. Listen, this is the ratio. In D.C., one technician to three patients. In Merlin, it's the same. One technician per three patients. In Texas, it's one to four. Other places, the ratio is much higher. One technician to seven patients in North Carolina. Now, if you're taking care of seven patients and, a, and you're down in North Carolina, and we know how tornadoes and does that natural disasters come through there? If you need to get out of there and you got to return patients' blood, you can't return all seven patients' blood back at the same time. Who are you going to take off first? Who's your priority? Is it going to be your parent? Is it going to be your mother? Is it going to be your aunt? Is it going to be your grandmother? Is it going to be your sister? Is it going to be your brother? Who it's going to be? Is it going to be your wife, your husband, your child? Who is it going to be if you got seven people you're taking care of? Yes, that's what these uh, large dialysis clinics do. Uh, they put the uh, caregiver under the gun like that. I used to do it. Here it is. Boom. What more do I need to say? This may be a common sight in your community. This is not just in Baltimore. This is in Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, North Carolina, South Carolina, California, Texas, New Jersey, Philadelphia, New York, Connecticut. I mean, it's all over the world. Now, the solution, what we're going to do about it. What are we going to do about it? This is what I'm doing about it. These shows. Me going around the different clinics and pointing this out. Having you go to the uh, site and sign the petition. So these companies could be uh, morally... Right, they're not bound by legal right because of corporate greed. Warren Buffett and the boys, no, but they have a moral obligation to put that information in the community so it prevents more people from becoming uh patients of the corporate greed that sucks up these communities every single day. And so I come to you right now and ask to join us by sharing these broadcasts any and every way you can. Penetrate the, uh, the, the, the groups. 
the groups that has six, seven, eight thousand warriors there, twenty thousand. It's ridiculous to have a Facebook kidney group, twenty thousand plus patients, and have people not allow broadcast that can share information that can educate warriors to let them know what their blood goes through when you want to see the inside of this filter and what your blood is exposed to i would so with that being said help us help you help the community please i beg you so with that being said, the information is free. We're not asking for any donations. All we're asking is for you to share and help us go global. Other people are going global with unnecessary <laughs> stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Drama. That sells. I get it. I get it. But at the same time, don't let kidney disease creep into your family life. It's the ninth leading cause of death in the United States. All you need is a blood and urine test, and you can find out where you're at. And the sooner you know where you're at, the better you are to make sound choice decisions and halting the progression. And if by chance you don't catch it fast enough and you do cross over to the other side, we're here to educate you. Over 60 years of experience not just myself with 33 years experience, but my partner Tamika Moore with 24 years, I mean 21 or 20 something years experience. We have that here to give you if you cross over to the other side. And also not just that experience, we come with you with other warriors, and other professionals who are willing to help you. Cassandra Floyd, master dietitian, renal dietitian. Sade Cutler, master social worker. Clinical social worker at that. We got Dr. Ken Suther. We got, we got access to uh, surgeons. Other nephrologists, you just saw a nephrologist on our show last night from Nepal, Dr. Shumsher. So if you do cross over the other side and you have to be on dialysis, we're going to help you navigate that process and still live the best life you can regardless if you're on dialysis. If you're on the transplant side, we got information to help you live the best transplant life possible. So the information's here all under one roof. We just need you to help us spread the word. Okay, that's all we need. There's no drama here. There's no hooping and hollering. There's no cursing. I may get off the rails. And, and say a curse word now and then because I'm so passionate about saving people, not just black people because blacks are at a high disproportion, disproportionate rate of getting this disease, but this disease affects everyone. Everyone. And you just heard over uh, last night in Nepal, the leading cause of kidney disease and failure is glomerulonephritis, not diabetes or hypertension like it is here. So we got 
a task ahead of us. Again, I ask you to share. And then tomorrow, tune in as I have on Jen Benson, founder. I got to make sure I say founder. <laughs> founder, executive director, CEO of transplantjourney.org. She's going to have one of her uh, mentees that she's navigating through the transplant process who unfortunately has kidney disease. So tune in tomorrow night, eight o'clock, right here on Urban Health Outreach Media. I'm going to have the pleasure of interviewing her and we hope that other people will see it. If you need a transplant, you're on the list. You know somebody needs a transplant. Now is the best time more than ever to reach out to this community. You got Jim Benson. You got the Brown Brothers advocating. You got Donna Tassat. You got Jeff Hartley. Uh, I could be missing some people. Uh, come on, guys. Help me out. Uh, I know I may be missing some people. Uh, uh, Don Edwards, Lisa Baxter, you got Jim Myers, you got Kent Bressler, Kidney Solution, you got uh, Jason Nunez. Um, man, I mean, you got, um, um, what's my man? Uh, Terrence Parker with Dialysis United and um, in, in Atlanta. You got Melissa Tuff down in Florida. You got Melissa Bias with uh, Remember Me. Um, come on. I, I know it's, it's so many. The, uh, you got uh, Minister uh, Anita Christian down in uh, Georgia. I mean, it's so many out there. We need to kind of bring this in together and network so Wherever kidney warriors need to get information, we know where to direct them. So with that being said, thank you. Thanks, Shine Love. I love you. I appreciate you. We're going to meet one day. I'm only here in D.C. I come to Baltimore often. I used to live in Randallstown. I had to sell my house and move back with my parents. Uh, that's the nature of this business, how these corporate companies like DeVita, uh, pretty much ended my career uh, with a workplace accident. So um, yeah, we got to get together one day, meet for coffee at Starbucks or something, who knows? But I'm always back and forth in Baltimore. So uh, matter of fact, I was there the other day. <laughs> so thanks again, guys. I appreciate you for watching. Thanks for commenting. Come on, guys, let's share. Hey, Brian, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, if you're on the list and you, you want to get a living uh, donor, reach out to the Brown Brothers. Uh, don't just stay on the list, but promote yourself. Go to Gene, uh, um, uh, Jen. Yeah, thank you too, uh, Shine Love. Absolutely. Uh, just let me know when you want to come on the show and uh, share that information about your experience uh, with kidney disease and your dad. And again, my condolences. And uh, and Jane, so so guys, share this broadcast. We got to come together as a community. I know I keep saying that, and I know we are, but I know we could do a lot better. I mean, it's millions of people undergoing <laughs> kidney disease, and so if we can have like the live broadcast, like a hundred people watching, and be like saying what they're going through over in Africa or Cameroon. I know they probably sleep, but I'm just saying, the people here in the United States, wherever you're at that's dealing with kidney disease, this is the place where we got to come together to share ideas and help each other out, navigate through this process so you won't be alone. That's the only way I can see do it. I can't close down any units, but I could try to decrease the amount of people coming on and educate people so they don't have to feel dependent on the people at the clinic because the more knowledge and information, you know, you don't have to be at home just being diagnosed with this disease and you don't have no one to call up at 10 
11 o'clock at night, you got a question about your access. You got a question about dialysis because you may not feel a certain way. Well, you can come here. You can even text me. You can even shoot me a messenger. Many warriors have done that with questions about dialysis. And I've more, I'd be more than welcome to answer it if I can, if I'm not busy doing something with my family or personal. But I will stop doing what I'm doing if it's important. Ask Tiffany, um, or Tiff, I think your last name is Young. I'm sorry, Tiffany. Uh, I believe it's Young, but she had a situation and she didn't reach out to me. I reached out to her because I saw it on Facebook. And as a result of that, she was able to get that situation resolved immediately at the emergency room before it turned into something a lot bigger. So I say that to say, oh yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't know where I got young from. I think it was uh, Tiffany Young was a, a travel nurse I met in Houston. But Tiffany Joseph, but Yes, she didn't reach out to me. I reached out to her, but I say that to say that's how much we care about you guys. We just need you to share the information and know that you're watching and that you need help. Just don't, please, don't be afraid to ask for help. We're here to help. We got tons of information. The other day, I did something on Mercer. So, I mean... This is evidence-based information. We're not just pulling it out of our hats. Sound evidence-based information. So with that being said, thank you for watching. I know it's being getting late. Uh, guys probably want to watch you uh, YouTube or surf some more on Facebook or uh, uh, Netflix, whatever, Tubi, whatever, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you. God bless, and I'll see you soon. Peace, and have a good evening. Y'all about to go down. I said y'all about to go down.